So with the Teller Amendment, it basically stated that when we were declaring war, that Congress and the United States has no intention of interfering with Cuba. The Teller Amendment specifically stated that the U.S. had no intention of imperializing or controlling Cuba um, after this war. And so this is going to be crucial because after the Spanish-American War, this Teller Amendment is actually going to be reversed. And we're actually going to see the United States intervene in Cuba in many different areas. So with this war um, being declared on Spain, this specifically was um, an interesting conflict because while the war was declared on Spain, the fighting is not going to happen in Spain. Everyone assumes that this fighting, all the fighting is going to happen in Cuba. However, we ended up having a little bit of strategy uh, change with this victory. And this quick U.S. victory, it was only about a four-month war. The war completely took place in 1898. And with this war, I want to talk about a couple of the main uh, victories and the main battles that we saw. So with uh, declaring the war. Um, this even got nicknamed a splendid little war by our Secretary of State, Hay, um, who we basically saw this war as kind of a stepping stone of U.S. moving into a global power. So again, like I said, this war was declared on Spain, but pretty much everyone assumed the fighting would happen in Cuba. Well, in 1898, before Teddy Roosevelt was president, before he was vice president, he was actually the secretary of the Navy. And being the secretary of the Navy, Teddy Roosevelt actually came up with a strategy of not just fighting in Cuba, but actually going after all Spanish colonies. So Teddy Roosevelt, being the secretary of the Navy in 1898, he actually said, why don't we go after the Philippines? Now, the Philippines were having an independent movement as well, trying to overthrow Spain. And Teddy Roosevelt, Roosevelt believed that if the U.S. goes after the Philippines first, it would totally throw the Spanish off. And our Navy went to the Philippines, and within eight hours, the United States ended up overthrowing the Spanish rule. The U.S. Uh, basically joined forces with the revolutionary movement in the Philippines, went to the capital. Um, one guard was killed in this battle, I guess you could say. And the Philippines basically were declared independent and the Spanish ended up basically surrendering the Philippines. Now, if you're Spain, think about how you're sending your troops to Cuba and all of a sudden you find out that one of your colonies has already been lost. Um, the U.S., think about the U.S. troops. They have gone to the Philippines and in eight hours had a victory. Definitely ca causes a lot of morale boost in the U.S. troops. So after the Philippines, then the fighting happened in Cuba. Now, Cuba was where most of the battle ha was taken place. And Teddy Roosevelt actually resigned as Secretary of the Navy because he wanted to go and fight. Um, Teddy Roosevelt, we talked a little bit about him already, definitely a pretty aggressive, pretty assertive guy. And he ended up resigning as the Secretary of the Navy, rounded up a bunch of his friends, created this volunteer unit that he ended up calling the Rough Riders. And you can see the picture of the Rough Riders here. And they actually volunteered, brought a cavalry to Cuba and fought the Spanish. Now, Teddy Roosevelt, again, this is before he's president. This actually made him a nationally known figure. People started heroicizing him. He was this war hero that, you know, led the Rough Riders and created a victory for the United States. And after um, we end up having the major battles in Cuba, we end up having the Spanish surrender and the U.S. having a victory. So quick war, but let's talk about the treaty that ended the war. Because the treaty that ended the war, the Treaty of Paris in 1898, had some controversial components to it that are still actually affecting a lot of our foreign policy and relationships today. All right, so the Treaty of Paris had three major provisions, three major um, agreements that were decided upon. One, it was determined that Cuba was independent. Cuba became an independent country free of the Spanish rule. Two, 
The U.S. also acquired Guam and Puerto Rico. Guam and Puerto Rico were both Spanish territories. Now they are American territories. These two territories, there were no fighting. There was no battle. There was nothing to do with them in this war. Yet the U.S. just took them after the Spanish-American War. So imagine one day you wake up, you're Puerto Rican, you're in Puerto Rico, Spain, and then the next day, now you're part of America. With imperialism, it definitely causes a, quite a few identity questions and identity crises. Um, and then the third provision that was very controversial was the fact that the U.S. also acquired the Philippines and the U.S. paid Spain $20 million for the Philippines. Now, remember, the Philippines, they wanted to be independent. They were leading an independent movement before the U.S. got involved. So they want independence. They do not want to be imperialized. So they just beat the Spanish and were freed from the Spanish, but now they're immediately under the American rule as well. So this actually ended up leading to what is called the Filipino War. You may see the Filipino War actually spelled with an F instead of a PH, because that's how um, it may, many people do spell Philippines. Um, but with the Filipino War, we ended up basically, when we allied with the revolutionaries, now we're fighting with the revolutionaries in this war. And the Filipino War lasted for quite a long time. It actually lasted from 1898 all the way until 1902. And the main person who was um, leading this movement against the United States was Emilio Aguinaldo. Emilio Aguinaldo actually fought alongside the U.S. when we helped the Philippines overthrow the Spanish. Now, Aguinaldo is fighting against the United States. Um, and he basically used guerrilla warfare tactics against the U.S. And this war was extremely costly. Um, many lives lost on both sides. A lot of people kind of de determined that this war didn't really have a winner. Um, the U.S. just suppressed the revolutionary so much that they ended up just conceding. Now, the Philippines definitely is going to be a questionable territory because they did not want the U.S. there. And here the U.S. is taking over them and forcing them into their rule. Um, the, the U.S. is going to keep control of the Philippines until after World War II in the 1940s. And the relationship was really never that strong. Um, but Taft will be appointed by Teddy and Taft will go and be the first governor of the Philippines. So definitely an issue with imperialism there. So there are groups of people who feel that imperialism is actually wrong, that imperialism is not the, that should not be the foreign policy of the United States. And a lot of the people who were in the anti-imperialist league were definitely Democrats. Um, the Democrats were very against imperialism, and William Jennings Bryan was one of the biggest leaders of basically um, opposing imperialism and trying to stop the U.S. from taking other territories. Um, we also had insular cases where the Supreme Court ruled that constitutional rights were not extended to territories, and this became a big controversy because Guam, Puerto Rico, Philippines, Hawaii, um, all these territories that now are acquired by the U.S., the people within do not even have United States constitutional rights. And so with the insular cases, we're, we're having this issue about how are these people represented and how do they belong in the United States government if they don't have constitutional rights. And the last major issue that we saw as an effect of the Spanish-American War was the Platt Amendment. Um, the Platt Amendment is basically what overthrew the Teller Amendment. The Platt Amendment now says that Cuba had um, basically had to give the United States a naval base. This is where we have Guantanamo Bay still to this day. Um, the Platt Amendment forced Cuba to give the U.S. this naval base. Um, and it also basically said that the U.S. can intervene in Cuban affairs. 
So the Platt Amendment, the fact that the U.S. can now intervene in Cuban affairs, the Cubans don't have their own control and their own independence. The U.S. is now intervening on that.